In this lesson, I'm going to take three examples from the book that ask us to find critical numbers of a function. We'll start with number 12. g of x is equal to x squared times x squared minus 4. To find the critical numbers, we first need to find the derivative and then ask two questions. Where is the derivative equal to 0 and where is the derivative undefined? So we'll start by finding the derivative. To do this, one might think you might need the product rule, and that would work, but I think it's just quicker to start by, by uh, distributing. So I'm going to rewrite this as g of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x squared. Okay, this will be easy enough to find the derivative of. So the derivative is going to end up being 4x cubed minus 8x. And my first question is going to be, well, where is the derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to take the derivative 4x cubed minus 8x equals 0. I'm going to factor out a 4x. That leaves me with x squared minus 2. And I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So in the first case we get x equals 0. And in the second case we get x squared minus 2 equals 0, which means that x squared equals 2 and that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, the second question we have to ask ourselves is, where is the derivative undefined? Now, to answer that question, we usually would take the denominator of any derivative and set that equal to 0. In this case, there is no denominator, so there's no place where the derivative is undefined. So that's not going to contribute to our list of critical numbers. So overall, our critical numbers are going to be 0 and plus or minus root 2. Now this list could have been longer if there were more, if there were other critical numbers from the undefined portion, but that wasn't applicable for this problem. Now let's talk a little bit about what this means. The critical numbers that are found in this process here tell us the locations at which the slope of the tangent line is going to be zero or where there's going to be horizontal tangent lines. Had we got any answers over for the second question over here, this would have told us the locations of any cusps, vertical tangent lines, or discontinuities. But again, for this problem, there was no contribution from this question written here in red. What I'd like to do now is draw the graph of this original function and show you that at 0 and at plus or minus root 2 are going to be locations where there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. Okay, so I'm going to start by entering in the function y equals x squared times x squared minus 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it bold because I know that this doesn't show up super big on the YouTube video. So I'm going to make it bold so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to tweak the window just a little bit. I'm going to make it go from negative 5 to 5. And uh, I think that'll be good. I'm going to graph it right now. So this is a polynomial function with even positive end behavior. And what I'd like to really highlight for you are the three locations where there are going to be horizontal tangent lines. One is here. And as you might guess, that's negative root 2. The other one is here, which is positive root 2. And then the third one is here at 0, thus confirming our work that we did manually. To find the derivative in number 14, I'm going to need to use the quotient rule. This is going to be the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Now I can clean this up a little bit, particularly the top. If I distribute the 4 through, I get 4x squared plus 4 minus 8x squared. And I'm going to leave the denominator as it is. I'm going to do one final adjustment to the numerator. And I'm going to say that that is 4 minus 4x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. So there's our derivative. And as you know from the last example, there are two key questions I need to ask. The first of which is, where is the first derivative equal to 0? So I'm going to take that first derivative, 4 minus 4x squared, all over x squared plus 1. 
squared. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to make it 0 over 1. And I'm going to cross multiply, and I get 4 minus 4x four squared is equal to 0. And if I factor out a 4, I'm left with 1 minus x squared is equal to 0. We're left with 1 plus x and 1 minus x equals 0. So we have x is equal to plus or minus 1. Now the list could get bigger depending on the answer to our next question. And that is, where is the first derivative undefined? And again, to answer this question, we'd want to look at the denominator of the derivative. And in this particular problem, we actually have one. So x squared plus 1 squared is equal to 0. Now if I square root both sides, I end up getting x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And if I isolate, I get x squared equals negative 1. And there's no such real number that when squared gives us negative 1. So there's no place where it's undefined. So I'm going to say there's nowhere, there's no location for x for which the first derivative is undefined. So that means in conclusion our critical numbers are only x equals plus or minus 1. Now once again for those, for the answer to this part right here this tells us where there's going to be horizontal tangent lines. And I want to convince you of this by looking at the graph on the graphing calculator again. Okay, so I'm going to enter the function 4x divided by the chunk x squared plus 1. And I'm just going to do a zoom 6, standard viewing window. Okay, the way that I look at it, there it looks like there are two places where there might be a horizontal tangent line. One would be right here, and that looks like it's probably about negative 1, and the other one would be right here, and that's positive 1. So it's interesting that doing this procedure allows us to find those critical numbers. This third and final example of finding critical numbers is going to be the most labor-intensive of all. Plus, it includes trigonometry, which is an added difficulty for many students. So to find the critical numbers, my first step is to find the derivative. So the derivative of this trig function is going to be 2 secant theta tan theta plus the derivative of tan theta, which is secant squared theta. So actually, finding the derivative wasn't all that bad, but now we've got to find the answer to two questions. The first of which is, where does that first derivative equal zero? Okay, so I'm going to say 2 secant theta tan theta equals zero. And I'm going to factor out a secant theta. That leaves me with 2 tan theta plus secant theta. I'll set each factor equal to zero. In the first case, I get secant theta equals 0. If I reciprocate both sides of this, I end up getting cosine theta is undefined. And from the unit circle, we know that there's no such theta for which cosine is undefined. So this is never going to contribute to our list of critical numbers. Never. Now over here, this is going to be a little bit complicated. We're going to take 2 tan theta plus secant theta, and we're going to ask, well, where does that equal 0? And I think to proceed with this, I'm going to change everything to sines and cosines. So I'm going to make it 2 sine theta over cosine theta plus 1 over cosine theta. And now that since these two fractions have the same denominator, we could write this as a single fraction. So it's going to end up being 2 sine theta plus 1 all over cosine theta equals 0 or 0 over 1. When I cross multiply, I end up getting 2 sine theta plus 1 
equals zero, or that sine of theta is equal to negative one half. And again, I'm going to trust your knowledge of the unit circle. There are two locations that sine equals negative a half on the interval from zero to two pi. They are two ten and three thirty. But in a calculus class, they usually want everything in radians. So we're going to say 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now we're only halfway done with the question because we also have to ask the question, where is that first derivative undefined? So where is f of prime undefined? So 2 secant theta plus tan theta is undefined. So for me to answer this question, I'm really just thinking a lot about the unit circle. And I'm also thinking about the graphs of these. And I'm wondering, OK, where, where are these things undefined? And I know that secant is undefined at theta is equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And I know that tangent is undefined at these same places. Now it also just so happens that at these two values of theta, those are not in the domain of the original problem. And if you look at the definition of a critical number, the ultimate values that you're going to put on the list have to be part of the original domain. So even though these show up here, we can't put them on the list of critical numbers because they are not in the original domain of the function. If we were to graph this original function on the graphing calculator, there would be asymptotes at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And consequently, they need to be excluded from the domain. So our only critical numbers are going to be the, the two that we found in blue. And they're going to be, uh, well, not x. I was going to put x, but it's really theta equals 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, or 210 and 330. And uh, I guess I want you to think about those two in degrees, because when I illustrate this, I think it'll just be, it'll be easier to see on the calculator. So here's the calculator proof of those two answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in 2 secant. Now, there's no secant button, so I really have to do 2 over tangent, uh, 2 over cosine, rather. 2 over cosine is the same as 2 secant. I'm going to add on to that tangent. And I'm going to make it thicker so you can see, because I know that it's not easy to see on YouTube. And while I would normally do this in radians, I'm, I'm actually going to do it in degrees so you can see the number 210 and 330 as part of the solution. So what I'm going to do is go from, instead of 0 to 2 pi, I'm going to go from 0 to 360. And I'm going to make my interval by 90s. And I'm going to graph. So there's that first asymptote I was talking about at pi over 2 or 90. There's the next asymptote at 3 pi over 2 or 270. So the only critical numbers that we got were at 210 and 330. And look at the graph and see if those are potential places for there to be horizontal tangent lines. I'd say the first one I could see being right here. And that's a maximum. So I'm going to do second trace maximum, which is option 4. I'm going to go a little bit to the left, which it is. Now I'm going to move the cursor a little bit to the right. And then for guess, I'm going to go right on top of it. And right here, we should see a maximum at 210. Excellent. Now the other place that I think there would be a horizontal tangent line is down here, or over here, I should say. And I'm guessing it's going to be 330. And this guy is a minimum. So this is going to be second trace option 3. And I'm going to move the cursor over there so I can do the whole minimum business and confirm. All right, so I'm going to enter for the left bound and move the cursor somewhere over to the right of that minimum. And then I'm going to come back right over here. And this should say 330. Let's hope that it does. Ah, there we go, 330. So I'm a visual learner. I, I hope you take the time to actually watch this portion on the calculator because then you can really see why the answers work. Um, so three examples of how to find critical numbers.